The Moonlight Village is the newest endgame dungeon to come out in Realm of the Mad God, and it came with wow. 14 new awesome items. They're all really interesting, some are weaker, some are stronger, but the point of this video is to put them in a tier list. Yeah! I've gotten every single item from the dungeon myself and spent a lot of time with each one so I can give you an in-depth review of how the items fare against other items in the game, and if it's worth going for. So let's get started, shall we? There's two rings from the shrine, which is the event that the Moonlight Village drops from in the realm. Then the first bosses drop six different whites, three being abilities and three being different armors, one for each class type. And then there's a second hidden boss called Yumi, which drops six of her own whites. There's three, and then another three that can be made from a white, which is like an upgrade material, similar to what you can find in the Steamworks. The way I have the tiers set up, by the way, it's quite standard. There's the S, the A, the B, the C, and the D, as you'd expect in most tier lists, but the difference between them for this is the S tier would be for only the best in slot items, so the ones that you would use over all other in the game, then A tiers for great items, B tier for just good items, C tiers for ech items, the ones that you wouldn't call bad, but the ones that you wouldn't call good, and D is just for the ones that make you throw up. So let's get started from the beginning, shall we? The rings. The token of warmth is a ring that gives you 100 HP, 100 MP, 10 vitality, which translates to 4.4 health per second, or half a second less of in combat time, and 7% fame bonus, which is pretty solid stats. It has a reactive proc called Warm Spirit, which gives you healing while shooting, but it also slows you, which sounds like it's a negative, but it can actually be really beneficial. Now, just to let you know, the healing buff is worth 75 vitality on its own, because it heals you 20 health per second and this is even while you're in combat. My first impression with this ring is I thought it would be really not that great and only used for the slow, but the healing is actually really nice. Especially for me who likes to play more solo, if I'm playing a class that doesn't have access to the healing buff, this ring is great to swap to during tough fights. The slow can be really deadly though, you can't use it against like chase phases for example, but the slow is a net positive in my opinion if you do use this ring as a swap out instead of like a primary ring, because it helps you so much in some specific phases, like for example, it helps you breeze through the Moonlight Village. It can also help you with heaps of other phases, like every single Exalt Dungeon has at least one phase it will help with, like for example Steamworks, the Fungal Caven, and heaps more. So yeah, even if you do have a strong pet, since the pet does get disabled in combat, and so does half of your vitality, this ring can help you out a lot through endgame dungeons, and especially is helpful if you have a worse pet. And yeah, I can't express how strong the slow is for helping you with some phases like all of Moonlight Village. So if you have a tough time getting through that dungeon, farming this ring first might be the best idea. Because of how beneficial the slow is and how much the healing can help you, I actually think this is a great ring. I'd put this in the A tier. Now very similarly to the last one, we have the Token of Happiness, which is another ring. It's just been dropped in some blue paint, and it also gives you 100 HP, 100 MP, the 7% fame bonus, and slows you while shooting. But instead, this one gives you 10 Wisdom instead of 10 Vit, meaning that you'll get 2.2 mana per second. And it also gives you Energized instead of Healing. Now the thing about comparing healing and energized is that healing is a very easy to acquire buff. I mentioned that I've been playing solo a lot so the token of warmth has actually been pretty nice. But if you're playing in like a discord or a massive group of people, you probably have the healing buff most of the time. So you'd only be using token of warmth for the slow primarily. But with the token of happiness, the energized buff, it is so rare. Like you can only get it from very seasonal items. I think there's like two Christmas rings that can give it to you under some crazy conditions, and you can also get it through April Fool's items which aren't realistic to use. So this is the only way to gain the energized buff basically, and similar to the healing buff, the energized buff is worth 75 wisdom, giving you an extra 10 mana per second on top of the also 10 wiz that the ring gives you. Now this is actually the ring that gives you the most mana regen in the game, except gemstone would probably be better most of the time still, because that one discounts your ability by 30%, but it it is really comparable and sometimes could be better. Like for example, if you're constantly in combat, then the discount that the gemstone ring provides
provides is probably not as valuable as the amount of mana you'd get from the token of happiness. Considering how in combat you get 50% less wisdom, and the worse your pet is, the better the token of happiness would be for you over the gemstone. Like for example, if you used your mum's credit card and got a maxed out divine pet with a level 100 M hill, that gives you 45 health per second, and in that case, the gemstone would be getting a lot of value. It basically adds another 15 mana per second on top of your pet, because of the 30% discount, roughly. But if you have a s level 70 M hill, that only gives you less than 10 mana per second from the pet, meaning that the gemstone value would be providing you almost nothing, and that the ring would actually be giving you more mana on its own. Another thing you could do is you could just regen your mana between phase changes with the token of happiness, and then swap to a gemstone to expend it all. But um, that's a bit too much micro for me, chief. If you are trying to complete dungeons like Moonlight Village or Steamworks for the first time, this ring would actually be probably better for you if you also use a priest, because of how much more health you can gain from using your mana. And since this ring is probably only bested by gemstone at high levels and has the slow effect, I'd be giving this a solid, really high A tier. Now let's get into the whites that the first bosses drop, starting with the first three abilities. The first being the sheaf called the Elegant Parasol. Now when pressing space with the Elegant Parasol, it gives you four charges of a dash, which leaves behind these pedals, dealing between 250 and 350 damage each. Now the annoying thing is that it forces you to go at least 5.5 tiles to a maximum of 7.5 tiles, so you can't like dash on the spot just to gain invulnerability frames. But these projectiles also paralyze enemies, and you gain a stat multiplier to your vitality, which goes up by 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 percent, with each stack lasting 10 seconds. And the shots pierce enemies and obstacles, and ignores enemy defense, and also paralyzes for three seconds. On top of this, all you also get eight attack, eight vitality, and it costs 150 mana. It has a five second cooldown and gives you a seven percent fame bonus. Now everyone is really quick to call this item really really bad, but after playing with it for a little bit, it actually made me realize that this is extremely underappreciated. So since the elegant parasol shoots 14 different shots dealing 300 damage each on average, it does 4200 armor piercing damage per dash. Now the problem with hitting all of the shots is if you take the minimum dash distance, for some reason the shots like start behind you to make up for the smaller dash because they always come out the same way. But if you take the full dash distance, the shots start out from where you start dashing. So yeah, you just have to be standing on the enemy and then you'll hit all shots quite easily. But at the same time, that is a bit of an issue. Though if you do start the dash from like one tile away, which is normally the case, you'd be hitting uh, about 12 or 10 of the shots, which is still between 3k to 4k damage. And on top of that, you also get the 8 attack. The only competition this sheaf really has is like the Pyro Sheaf is one, which shoots three different bullets dealing 600 damage each and also has a trail damage of 2200 damage, so 4k per ability use, around the same. But this one doesn't pass through armor, but that would only be taking back a tiny bit of the damage to be honest. And this one only gives you five defense stats, which is yuck. The more well-known competition to the Elegant Parasol would be the Radiance Sheaf, which drops from the mini bosses from Crystal Caven, which shoots four shots dealing 500 damage each with a trail damage of 1200 and this one also gives you five attack and 40 hp which are pretty juicy base stats and it also has an attack damage multiplier but the issue with this one is that it has wavy shots so you won't be hitting all of the shots every time to be honest and again it doesn't armor pierce if you were to give me the choice out of the three i'd probably still choose the irradiant sheath but as my second choice it would probably be the elegant parasol especially if i have a weaker pet Vitality does help you get out of combat, so the fact that you get 8 vitality from the parasol and a vitality multiplier means that you'd be able to stay in the fight heaps more and be heaps safer. Actually, you know what? I'm kind of 50-50 on whether I'd use the Irradiant Sheaf or the Elegant Parasol. One other issue about the parasol that the Pyro Sheaf and the Irradiance doesn't have is that you can use the other two on the spot, just shooting projectiles, but you can't really do the same with the parasol because it forces the minimum distance, and the shots will only go out as far as you travel. So if you're not confident with going ham with the parasol, you probably won't do a good job. But yeah, I think there's potential for the parasol to be best in slot, but I'm not certain on it. It would depend on your own preferences. I do think this one is super underrated and I'd actually put it in A tier above the token of warmth.
All right, next up we have, oh my God, next up we have the Taiko drum. This item, man, is so gross. It's so strong. So uh, just to give you the basic rundown on what it does, it's an ability for the Bard and basically has two different modes, both costing 100 mana. One of the modes increases shot speed by 162.5% and increases the range of your projectiles by roughly 25%. It makes a Debo go from seven tiles to nine tiles and it also gives you Berserk for 5 seconds. Now let me get into this mode before I talk about the second one, because this is the better of the two. It's a really respectable alternative to the Shatter's loot. With the Shatter's one, it gives you 10 attack, gives you damaging, but it makes your shots slow down. So it's kind of interchangeable which one would be better for what situation. When the bosses are moving slowly so you can easily predict where they're going to move so you can actually shoot the slow shots, or when the boss is completely standing still, the Shatter's loot would be better, but if the enemy is moving more erratic it would be silly not to use the Moonlight Village loot instead because of the sped up shots. And the Shadows loot has always been considered the best in slot loot, and I would consider this equally as good. Until we discuss a game breaking bug question mark. I think this is a bug, but if you actually use the Shadows loot with the Tyco, not only do you gain the damaging from the Shadows loot, the Berserk from the MV loot, and the 10 attack from the Shadows loot as well, but for some odd reason, it completely cancels out the slowing down shots of the shadows. Like it doesn't even calculate the difference of the slowed down shots from the shadows loot and the sped up shots from the Moonlight Village loot. It just completely cancels it out and goes at the speed that it would normally would if you only use the Moonlight Village loot. The Moonlight Village loot with the Berserk and the five decks increases your damage by roughly 40%, while the shadows loot with the damaging and the 10 attack roughly increases your damage by 50%. Now using the Moonlight Village loot and the shadows loot gives you a roughly 90% damage increase with the benefit of the faster shots and the further range. There's no way this was intended. This combo is still not that mana costly so you can still use a ring that's not gemstone to keep up the combo and it makes Bard a strong contender for the best class in the game. Definitely the best bow class. But yeah for the second mode for this item is pretty not too special. All it does really is give you a healing buff while extending weapon range but it also slows down your shots like the Shadows loot so it's a bit annoying. But the healing buff that the loot does provide is quite long. It starts out at 5 seconds, but if you have around 75 whiz, it does go up to 9 seconds. So it is really useful if you do need a healing buff, you can just swap over to the second mode. So yeah, it would be really nice if you have a weak pet. Definitely a HPE moment. Guys, I have to put this at the top of S tier. It is so busted. Wait, never mind. I'm making a new tier. A new tier had to be created for this. We have the double double S tier for overpowered items, and yep, the Tyco is sitting in the. <laughs> Let's see if there's any more that go there. Okay, now we're up to the Rainmaker. This one is super interesting. Not for good reasons though. <laughs> I mean, the mechanic of it is really interesting. When you hold down space, it like makes it rain, literally. And it only allows you to make it rain three towers away. I'm not sure exactly about the range of the Rainmaker because it does say on the tool tip that the range is three towers away. And it does look like that the total radius of the rain trap is six, but at the perimeter of the rain, it looks like there's not as many particles that hit down so the greatest damage is actually in the middle so you do want to be using it three towers away at maximum which already is a big big con because Huntress is a very squishy class and you want to keep as much range as you can usually but when it comes to the rain traps practicality how do you always keep the enemy within three tiles I mean you don't always have to the item is kind of used in bursts while you're shooting depending on how fast you are shooting as you hold space it rains down the bullets and it shoots down the range dealing 250 to 300 armor piercing damage. I don't know how this number is calculated because uh, it rains and it also doesn't look that intuitive which is another big con. Like I can never tell if I'm hitting the enemy with this damn trap. The base stats on it are also 100 MP and an, an extra 5 dexterity with 7% XP bonus with a cooldown of 5 seconds for some reason. So yeah I don't know how to uh, talk about this trap that much. It's not as easy to compare 
as other things because you can't really just say the numbers. You have to see how it actually works. And let me tell you, it does not work that well. <laughs> um, if you use it with a best in slot set, it's super underwhelming. Not only is it annoying to use, but if the enemy is in range, it doesn't do that much damage. It gets beaten out by the fungal trap. To make this item actually considerable for end game damage, you have to set up a special build. The item works better the faster you fire. So the only time I've seen this trap be considered for end game is if you use it with a T-shot and also the Vindication armor and the gemstone for MP cost reduction so that you can use this trap more. And yeah, how you actually want to use this trap is in bursts. So you hold down space while you're shooting, expend your whole mana bar, and only during that 5 seconds or however long it takes to expend your mana bar is when you want to be 3 towers away from the enemy, which can still sometimes be tough. I tried using this against the dummy, and with the T-shot build, the Rainmaker was doing 30,000 damage in 5 seconds on the 50 defense target, which is pretty crazy compared to the 21,000 that the upgraded Debo best in slot build would do, with the fungal trap instead, but it wasn't really a realistic scenario because A, I was able to safely be in range of the dummy, and B, the dummy was only vulnerable for however long it took for me to actually expend my full mana bar, when there'd be a lot of time waiting for your mana to come back to use the Rainmaker trap again, unlike other traps where you can use it consistently. So I gave this Rainmaker trap a good go with the T-shot build, and then I also used the upgraded Debo. So you know what I did for you guys to give it a proper go? I took both sets into the Lost Halls to see how fast I can not only clear all the enemies and kill the Marble Defender, but also how long it would take me to kill the Marble Colossus solo with both sets, with a perfect pet. First, let me tell you that using the Fungal Trap was so much more carefree, and I can imagine the same being with other traps. Since I didn't have to go up and kiss the enemy with the free tile range, and when I was using the Rainmaker Trap, it was a lot more scary. So let me give you the numbers. With the upgraded Doombo build, it took me just over 5 minutes to clear the Lost Halls, up to the Marble Defender and kill it, and the Marble Colossus took me just over 6 minutes. But with the Rainmaker build, clearing the same amount of rooms and killing the Marble Defender took me just over 8 minutes, which was about 3 minutes more, and the Marble Colossus solo took me just over 8 minutes, which was 2 minutes more. And I did have a much more stressful time with the uh, Rainmaker Trap over the Fungal Trap that I could just use from so far away. There was some parts that I did feel with the Rainmaker Trap be better though, like I think I cleared slime rooms faster, and when I was being chased I could actually use the Rainmaker Trap, unlike the Fungal Trap where the enemy would get hit by a few shots from the trap and Bye, then completely walk past it. But yeah, overall the Fungal Trap just felt so much better, and it's probably easier to obtain because it drops from an easier boss and you can get a blueprint for it. But nothing like that exists for the Rainmaker Trap yet, and considering I had to use such a specific build just to give this trap a try. Yeah, I didn't like that very much. The main things holding the Rainmaker trap back is the range and the cooldown. Both really annoying. And also the visuals. I can never tell if I'm hitting the enemy even with particles on high. Now I'm still not sure about the Rainmaker trap. Like, I don't know if there's a better bow to use alongside it to get a faster Lost Halls clear. But I'm pretty confident that this trap should go low in the C tier. I really wanted to put it high in the trash tier. But um, I feel like there's something I'm missing. Let me know in the comments below. So that was the free abilities from the first bosses. Let's go into the free armor pieces. And the armor pieces is our first introduction to an interesting mechanic that some of the Moonlight Villagers do have, which is the flame mechanic, which basically allows you to spawn flames to give you all sorts of different buffs and debuffs on the enemy and do extra damage. So the robe is called the Flowering Kimono, and it gives 120 MP, 10 defense, 7 speed, 12 whiz, and 7% XP bonus. And what the Flowering Kimono allows you to do is on ability use, it costs an extra 40 MP and it summons a friendly spirit which heals allies. If you use this item by itself, it gives you a healing buff for 5 seconds, every 15 seconds, if you do use it as often as possible. Now stats wise, the uh, robe isn't that great, it's got a very low defense for an end game robe, very low, and the other stats aren't that great either. And a uh, healing effect for 5 seconds, every 15 seconds? Are you kidding me? That can't be good. Only on a petless character would you consider that to be maybe good, but it also makes you spend extra MP for it, which is a bit obscene. Like there's other robes that exist which are much better for survivability and can be easier to obtain. Like to give you a bit of a comparison, we know that the healing buff gives you 20 health per second, but for example with the mantle of the monarchy robe from the shadows, which is arguably as difficult to obtain, that one has a passive 20 
vitality, which means you'd be getting 8.8 .8 health per second from nothing. But if you do get hit, it gives you 125 extra vitality for 10 seconds on a 25 second cooldown. So for that 10 seconds, you have around 36 health per second coming in, which is way more than the kimono for way longer. And that robe gives you the same defense and some HP, which is always welcome. Even if we compare with a much easier to obtain robe, like for example, the water dragon silk robe, which drops from there of Draconis, that one heals you for 100 HP and applies healing for three seconds when under 75% HP and using your ability with a 15 second cooldown. So this one heals you for 160 HP every 15 seconds for no extra MP cost compared to the kimono, which costs the 40 MP to heal you for 100 HP over five seconds. I think the water dragon silk robe is just better because not only does it give you the instant 100 HP, but also if you do have the healing buff already from another player, it doesn't cancel out the benefit from the robe. It does give you three seconds of healing though, but it's mostly the 100 HP. That is great. And water silk also gives you more defense at 13 defense, basically the same speed, seven speed and six attack and five vit and is much, much, much cheaper to craft. I mean, you can't craft the uh, kimono yet anyway, but yeah, what a piece of shit. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't know what they could do to make this robe better. If you do upgrade the flames, which requires you to have more flames around it, the healing buff does become stronger. It doubles its power with two flames and it triples its power with three flames. And the extra healing that you get from two and three flames doesn't count as the healing buff. So it wouldn't be useless if someone's already providing you with that buff. You do need to use other Moonlight Village items to achieve that though. And on most robe classes, that would require you wearing the ring, which is heaps harder to get. We'll talk more about that one later. On its own, because of how much this robe gets beaten out by itself, by the water silk dragon robe, which is such a common robe and easy to obtain, I think the flowering kimono should be low in the D tier to be honest. But because the flame can get upgraded, it maybe should go high in the D tier or maybe middle in the D tier. I'm not sure, we'll see. <laughs> Next up, we have the Sage's Wacky Biki. The stats on this one are 20 defense, 15 vitality and 15 wisdom, which is already looking a lot better to be honest. It's pretty rare to see so much wisdom and so much vitality on an armor. The wisdom doesn't matter that much, but the vitality is awesome, especially if you have no pet. And it helps melees because it makes your pet come out of combat quicker. 15 vitality does translate you getting out of combat three quarters of a second faster, which sounds like nothing, but it actually is a lot. Now the flame summoning effect of this one also costs 40 MP, but instead summons a flame, which slow enemies within 4.5 tiles and slows them for three seconds. And it has a cooldown of 15 seconds. Seconds. This armor's active ability has another similar issue to the previous where it provides like such a common benefit because so many classes have healing but so many classes also have slowed. I'd say they're both the most common buff and debuff in the game and slowing is really useful but you have to be very close to the enemy to get it off and it's not even consistent. At best you have it going a third of the time and even when the flame is upgraded with other flames which is hard to do because the only other item that you can use on armor classes is the ring. When upgraded to the second tier, it instead deals an extra 300 damage per second. And then when upgraded to the third tier, it also paralyzes on top of that. So yeah, not too special at all. Just like the previous item, I think the active ability for this item is really, really, really bad. But I think the stats save it a bit. Out of other armors that actually have defense, this armor has the highest vitality. And yeah, with how generous it is with its vitality and wisdom, I think the defense is still pretty high at 20. So just for the base stats alone, because I don't think the flame passive is pushing it up in the tier list that much, I think this one should get a low C tier, maybe even a mid C tier. You know what? I would actually put it above the trap. Not by much though. All right, last but not least, definitely not least because it's hard to be less than the two previous items. We have the third armor from the first bosses. This one's called the Ethereal Happy and this one's for leather classes. Passively, this one gives you 15 speed, 15 defense and seven XP bonus. So already it gives you the most speed out of any level, which is pretty crazy. But the active ability changes that drastically because when shooting, it reduces your speed by 25, which makes it feel really similar to the rings that we talked about at the beginning. Just like the other armors, when using an ability for 40 extra MP, it summons an orbiting friendly spirit. This time it curses enemies. Similar to the last armor, this one curses for three seconds in a 4.5 square radius. And it also has a cooldown of 15 seconds. When upgraded, it isn't that much greater. It deals an extra 300 damage for the second tier 
upgrade and 600 damage for the third tier upgrade. So this armor is actually a lot more interesting than the other two in my opinion. Firstly, it gives you more speed than any other armor in the game, meaning that if you do want to go the fastest with a leather class, this is the armor to swap in to do so. The problem is though, when you shoot, it does reduce your speed, but I'd say it's actually another positive that it reduces your speed by so much, because it allows you to help with those phases that can be tough if you don't have slow movement speed, like the Moonlight Village phases. So not only does this armor help you move super fast, but it also helps you slow down. Because the curse is very inconsistent, I wouldn't even really value it when it comes to placing the item in the tier list. But yeah, the ability to slow down and speed up so much is a massive positive. I think this item is the first to be placed in the B tier, and uh, it will probably stay there, around the middle. Alright guys, now we're just down to the Yimmy Whites, and there's six of them, but before we jump into them, how are you enjoying this video and not subscribed, man? Also, thank you so much to all my patrons supporting me. If it wasn't for you guys, I'd probably be working the corner, so thank you so much. If you're interested in supporting me, there'll be a Patreon link in the description. Alright, that's enough selling out, so let's jump into it. Okay, so out of the six remaining items, three of them require a crafting material. Let's do the three other ones first, the ones that don't. Let's start with the bow, shall we? So the bow is pretty interesting. It's called the Makakoyumi. I'm amazing at pronouncing. The Makakoyumi does between 20 to 800 damage. The tooltip isn't really too accurate. Like the damage range isn't that much. The reason why it says between 20 to 800, the primary shot, it goes a bit longer than a debow, 7.5 range, and it's guaranteed to do 800 damage. So there's no damage range. And these shots pierce multiple targets and pass through obstacles. Not sure what that means, to be honest, or? And then there's two other shots, but to be honest, they're mostly just aesthetic. They're the two shots at the front. You won't be hitting those ever, basically. <laughs> but they also hit multiple targets and ignore the defense of the target. And the primary shot, the 800 damage one, has a rate of fire of 33%. And the bow has an XP bonus of 8%. Now, this bow on paper is crazy. It does 20% more damage, roughly. And the upgraded Doom bow used to be the best in slot bow, the highest damage. This one actually took the title from that bow. So this should be an S tier or a double S tier, right? Very wrong. Very, very wrong. On paper, this does the most damage, but there's many aspects to it that actually decrease its damage. The main thing about this bow is when you shoot, you're forced in combat and slowed. So not only are you slowed like the rings do and that level armor that I showed previously, which is a benefit and a negative, but you're also forced in combat. Let me explain why the slowed is an issue first. I mean, it doesn't take much extra explanation. If you're versing a O3 that is trying to kiss you and you're slowed while using this bow, yeah, it's probably not going to go well for you. So you can use this bow, but you can't always use it if that makes sense. Another issue about slowed or reducing your damage is like, say for example, if you need to keep up with the enemy, if you're slowed, it would be harder to do so. So like, for example, when the void is whipping around, you'll probably fall behind and thus do less damage compared to if you had the upgraded doom bow. Number two, you're forced in combat. This is probably an even worse factor. So the problem with being forced in combat is one, if you have a heal from your pet, which you probably do, you won't anymore. <laughs> so you have to dodge, but you're also slowed. So that's going to be tricky. So you're not only are you more likely to nexus because if you're slowed, it's sometimes harder to dodge some certain shots. It can also make it easier though. But if you do get hit, it's going to take longer to regen that HP. Also probably the biggest reduction to your DPS. If you get forced in combat and you have a magic heal on your pet, you won't be able to use it anymore. This is a big, big issue issue for best in slot archers and huntresses that love to expend their mana bar. This game has a disgusting pet meta where your ability does basically majority of your damage and void quiver and the fungal traps at the moment are crazy. That's why gemstone is probably the most popular ring when it comes to end game. So if you're using this bow, forget about using your ability as much as you normally would because your mana region will go way down. And also when you're in combat, it also reduces the effectiveness of your current wisdom and vitality by 50%. So the only class that can get away with this mana reduction without it being a travesty is probably the Bard, but it's still a really tough time doing the double loot combo. So the Moonlight Village loot and the Shadows loot. This combo requires you to regen 40 mana per second because both of the loots cost around 100 MP. But if you're in combat with your Bard, you're only getting 5 mana per second. So good luck keeping up that combo. So yeah, because of that, I'd much prefer to just use the upgraded Doombo, which on paper 
does 20% less damage. But not only do you get the massively increased mobility, the massively increased healing, but you keep up the combo or the mana spam with the other classes, which in reality ends up making you do more damage anyway. I think the only time that this bow is actually best in slot is uh, when you need to self slow and you don't have the other items or if you're petless and the abilities that you have aren't too great. So yeah, I'm sure this is the biggest surprise probably um, when it comes to this video so far, but I would actually probably put this at a... Oh, I don't know. This is so hard because <laughs> there's no way like it's just crazy putting it at C, but it just makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna put this at a high C. You can rage at me in the comments if you like, but it's done. Let's move on to the next one. The Scepter. Okay, this one won't have the same fate as the bow. The Scepter is pretty bonkers. It's called the Tezutsu Hanabi. I better be pronouncing these right. Firstly, let me just say that it gives you 50 HP, gives you 5 vitality, and 8% XP bonus. And it has two different forms. The ability one is called Light Show, and what it does, it summons an orbiting friendly spirit, like the armors, but this one instead chases and attacks enemies. So how the friendly spirits exactly work, on the first ability level, it does a shotgun, shooting three different bullets, dealing 150 to 200 damage each. And then this, just like the spirits that spawn from the armors, can also be upgraded. The level 2 on top of that adds infrequent 700 to 100 damage novas. And then the third level does frequent 70 to 100 damage novas. And the spawning of these spirits has a 10 second cooldown. Now I should mention, since we got to a part of the video where a single class can wear more than one of the flame related items, this is how now you can actually upgrade the flame solo. So if a sorcerer is wielding this Tezutsu Hanabi and the flowering kimono, it makes the flames level level 2. Now this is probably still not worth because the robe is that bad, but it can be fun. Because what happens when you do increase the flame levels as well is it increases their living duration. At a base level, the, all the flames last for 5 seconds, but on level 2 they last for 10 seconds and on level 3 they last for 15 seconds. So when you're wielding two of these flames, items you'll be rocking two flames a lot of the time for 10 seconds and then later on I'll show you you can have three of these flame items at once it's only with one class but you can this ability also has a second mode called firework stockpile and how it works when you have this ability on without having to activate it or anything just by shooting it builds up this stockpile which invigorates and strengthens nearby spirits yes I can read the tooltip very well thanks and this is another way that you can increase the flame levels so some Something that you could do is you can put down the fireworks and then spawn the flames with the other mode or vice versa and then yeah you just get a stronger flame out of it. Requires some macro but yeah. So the best way to use this scepter is use the ability one, the light show, once every 10 seconds and then you want to swap to the stockpile in order to keep it alive and keep it upgrading your flames. It's a shame that there's no on-screen cooldown so you know exactly when you can swap back to your primary mode but yeah with this method you can keep up two flames with just a scepter by itself. And yeah, I haven't even gone into the primary uh, part of the scepter, which is what you normally use scepters for, the lightning strike. So without any scaling, it does 175 damage to five different targets. And it has a nine tile range and 60 degree targeting cone. So it's really easy to hit. It's got a shock blast damage of 250 and has two shock blast targets, two shock blast range, and the shock blast triggers three times. Now you don't have to worry too much about these numbers because this scepter doesn't scale as well as the other endgame scepters like the Ross scepter and T7 which I would actually consider a good thing. The reason for this being that you don't have to worry about wearing a specific robe that gives you a lot of wisdom that's usually why you see a lot of people wearing a ritual robe. With this one you can use more fun robes like for example diplomatic robe or vesture or the flowering kimono the best in slot robe for all robe classes. Now the best scepter before this one was released was the scepter of Rost which comes from Steamworks and this one does 5400 damage to a 50 defense target over five seconds with not too special of a build and without even accounting for the spawned flames the new scepter the yumi scepter does 6100 damage over five seconds to a 50th defense target now if we use the fireworks strategy to buff up the flames this one instead does 1400 damage it's not even comparable man the only issue with this scepter the only one is that the flames have to be within a four to five tile radius of the enemy for it to 
just start sticking on, and then it sticks on them until they die. But yeah, it's not too tough to get in range once. You can even buff up the flames with the fireworks, and then send the flames on their way like you're dropping your kids off at school. And yeah, the flames burn everything down for you. How could I not put this in the double S tier? My god. Part of the reason why I'm putting this in the double S tier is because the sorcerer class is overpowered, so that contributed to this being so strong, like they had to one-up the other scepters. But even still, it's so crazy, man. I'm not sure whether I'd put the uh, drum or the scepter to be higher, but they're both definitely in the double S tier. Okay, you know what? Given that, this is OP on its own, while the drum needs the shatter's loot to really, really, really shine, I'd probably put this over the drum. All right, last one out of the Yumi Whites before we get into the ones that require the crafting material is the ring. This ring is called the Cage no Hikari, I think, <laughs> and uh, it further builds on the flame mechanic. So the stats are really similar to the rings that drop from the shrine, 100 HP and 100 MP again, but instead gives 5 vitality and 5 wisdom, so a bit of a mix, and gives you 8% fame bonus or XP bonus. And how it works on shooting, there's a 10% chance to summon a level 2 assorted orbiting friendly spirit at the cost of 80 MP. So that means you randomly start with one of the armor spirits that can spawn, but at level 2. Unfortunately, it can't spawn the flame that the scepter spawns, because that one's the best one, but all of the level 2 flames are pretty good to be honest. Just to give you a refresher, the one that comes from the flowering kimono gives you healing and 20 HP per second on top of that, so 40 HP per second in total, over 10 seconds. The one that comes from the heavy armor also lasts for 10 seconds, and it slows for 3 seconds, and deals 300 damage per second. And the one that comes from the level lives for 10 seconds, and curses for 3 seconds, and does 300 damage per second as well. And since they're already level 2, if you're wearing one of a piece that complements flames, it would bring it to level 3. So that could be one of the armors or the scepter. It's really hard to value this ring to be honest. A lot of the benefits that the flames provide are something that's already overly common. Like for example, the slows, the healing buff, and the curse. They're all super common. Almost every class in the game can do each. And the level 2 buffs to them, like the extra damage, don't do that much. It's just the increased duration that's special. If you've gotten this ring, you probably have the same amount of skill to get a hard mode crown or a gemstone, and you'd probably be better off using one of those depending on the class. So I can see this ring having a slight edge if you are playing solo, because those buffs and debuffs that we take for granted that all of the flames apply might not be so easy to gain. So one of the big issues about this ring is that it consumes your mana, which is uh, definitely a lot more noticeable if you don't have a pet, which is one of the reasons when I can imagine wanting the uh, flames, because the healing flame would be actually uh, noticeable then. But if you already have a pet, then you probably already are getting enough healing. And if you are using that ring just to get healing, you're relying on a lot of RNG because there's three different flames you can get. Also, it's worth noting that you can get the same flame to spawn that your armor spawns, whichever armor type you're using. So if the ring does spawn a slow, a curse, or a healing flame, it doesn't uh, work too well with your existing flame because the slowing or cursing doesn't stack. You do get the extra 300 damage per second, but that's not too noticeable to be honest. One other good thing about this ring is that if you use it with the Yumi Scepter, it does buff up the flames to make them stronger. But to be honest, you're better off using Gemstone, so you can spam that crazy scepter even more. To be honest, this ring is really hard to value. The ring would definitely come in handy on Sorcerer if you could guarantee the curse, because Sorcerer can't curse, but you can already slow with Fulmi, which is already such a strong slow. So if you get the slow flame to spawn, it's kind of a waste. It does also buff up the scepter flames, but it doesn't really interest me compared to other endgame rings. I definitely wouldn't call this an OP ring. I definitely wouldn't consider it a best in slot ring. Would I say it's great? Mmm. It's either on the low end of great or on the high end of good. I would probably put it at the high end of good to be honest. The stats are underwhelming and the effect is good. <laughs> good. Alright guys, now we're down to the three last UTs from the Moonlight Village, which drop from Yumi. Oh, well, the, technically they don't drop from Yumi. What happens is Yumi drops this flame called Yumi's Benevolence. Or maybe that's the yellow flame. I don't know, man. It's the red one, whatever it's called. And what you do is you bring it to the forge and you can either upgrade the Spirit Dagger, the Bulwark, or the Spirit Staff to make a much, much, much stronger version of each. And just like other legendary items, it costs 1,564 
storage file, but can be discounted with blueprints. Let's get into them, shall we? Starting with the Mischief, which is the one that is upgraded from Spirit Dagger. So the best in slot dagger for the longest time has been the Avarice Dagger, but that one has a bit of a silly projectile pattern. The best in slot dagger with a projectile pattern that you can rely on, because it goes completely straight, was always the C Dirk. So basically you are either an Avarice gamer or a T14 or C Dirk gamer, if you preferred the reliable shots. So we'll be comparing with those. With the Mischief, how it works, it has three different bullets. The first bullet deals between 71 damage and 307 damage and goes completely straight and has a 5.2 range. Then there's another two bullets. They have a chance of firing and they go in a bit of a spiral, kind of similar to the Avarice Dagger. And they both roughly do an average of 60 damage each, but these ones pierce armor. And the dagger gives you an 8% fame or XP bonus. So with pretty random items, the Mischief did 16,000 damage. The Avarice Dagger still did a tiny bit more damage, but it is considerably harder to hit. The Sea Dirk also does around the same, so it's kind of like whichever one you prefer the most. But that was on a 50 defense target. When it comes to a 5 defense target, the Mischief takes the lead, with the Avarice being like 10% damage behind, and Sea Dirk being 20% damage behind the Mischief. And since the Mischief shots don't wave that much, it's not much of a pain to hit. So yeah, at 50 defense, it's you pick your poison, whether you want Sea Dirk, Avarice, or Mischief. So at 50 defense, it's your choice whether you want to use a Sea Dirk, an Avarice, or a Mischief. But as the enemy defense decreases, Mischief starts becoming way better. Not only in its shot pattern, against Avarice at least, but in its damage. I still would consider Avarice to be potentially a better dagger than Mischief, because if you're an endgame player, that extra range is pretty important. It does have more than 10% more range, because Mischief is sitting at 5.2 range, while the Avarice sits at 6 range. And also since they wind around, the Avarice shots linger for a bit more, so if it's a chasing enemy, higher chance to hit it. But Mischief is still a great dagger. I would consider the Mischief to be the best in slot dagger alongside the Avarice dagger. Mischief would be better when it comes to lower death enemies. So yeah, I'd probably put Mischief low in the S tier. Okay, now we're moving on to a bit of a weird one called the Fortitude. Fortitude is the Bulwark upgrade. It's an item that's so strong, it doesn't even fit on the screen. When I want to show you guys the tool tip, why does Decca do this, man? It shoots 18 different bullets and they decide to put a new line for each one. What are you doing, man? You gotta be kidding. So this one works similarly to how Bulwark works. It's basically something that you shoot when there's no enemies around or the enemy is invincible so that you lay down damage before the enemy is vulnerable for a more instant acting one that can do more damage at the time, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. And this one almost feels like an ability because it has a cooldown to it. So how it works is you can shoot it three times and by shooting I really mean placing the minefield and it's got a 20 second cooldown after you use it. So after 20 seconds you recharge that charge. The shots spawn at varying ranges, they move around slightly, and the ones closer to the middle do more damage. The shots can hit multiple targets, so you can drag multiple targets through them. There's really not too much to say about this wand other than it works really well. To be able to place these down, it's just free damage, man. I always considered Bulwark to be underrated because uh, that was also free damage, but this is just a better version of it. Kind of like how people used Void Blade back in the day, or still do, but before it used to not move. Of course, this one also has the 8% fame bonus and can't really say too much more about it. This item obviously does the best against moving enemies like the fungal cave and worm or like the shatter's first boss when it bounces around like crazy or tries to jump on you. Pretty easily goes into the S tier I think since there really isn't any competition for it. The top of S tier it goes. Now last but not least we got the Vigor which is the spirit staff upgrade. How the Vigor works? It says it does between 55 to 77 damage, shoots two shots similar to tiered stabs, except at a much higher rate. It's got a rate of fire of 160%. The range is 8.5 tiles, just about, which is also the same as tiered stabs, and has a fame bonus of 8%. Another interesting part of this staff, other than the rate of fire, is the fact that on shooting, there's a 7.5% chance to release a festival spirit, which consumes 20 mana. And the spirit has a 6 second lifetime and does 600 damage over 6 seconds. It also explodes after 6 seconds, dealing 100 to 150 damage. Now these flames work a lot differently to the other flames that other Moonlight Village items have. These are less annoying to use because they sit right by you. They still have a 5 tile range though. So to use this staff properly, you have to be within a 5 tile radius of the enemy and don't even think about getting the explosion damage off. It only does 125 damage on average, but it basically explodes in a 1 tile radius around you so probably 
safer to say two tiles. The Vigor has a bit more of an annoying shot pattern than the T14 style. The shots do fly faster, but they have more of an arc to them, so you're more likely to miss. Now using a bit more of an end game set, the T14 staff on the 50 defense dummy did 15.3k, and the Vigor, if you're not in range for the flames to do damage, it only did 10.7k damage, which is like 50% less. So you have to be in range of the flames for this staff to be even a respectable staff compared to the tiered variant of the same rarity. Now if you only just start shooting as the target becomes vulnerable, the flames only do an additional 1000 damage, making it still about 4000 damage less than the T14 star. But if you pre-shoot for a while and you let the flames stuck up, you can get like 8 flames at the same time and then you deal another 1000 damage. But that's still about 2000 damage less than the T14 star on a 50 defense target. What about with the explosion damage? And the explosion damage makes barely any difference. Now if we compare the staffs on a 15 defense dummy, the T14 staff does 18.5k damage, but assuming that we spawn some flames beforehand so the Vigor stands a chance against the T14 staff and we're in range of the dummy, it also does 18.5k damage. So you have to put in a lot more work compared to the T14 staff in order to deal the same damage. And that's at 15 defense. It still does significantly less as the enemy increases its defense level. And this is also not taking into account that this staff comes at the cost of some mana. So if you're using a wizard or a necro, you could be spamming your ability more using the tier 14 staff, contributing to even more damage compared to if you're using the Vigor. So why is the Vigor so suck compared to the tier 14 staff? To be honest, I love the Vigor. It's a cool design. And there's one really cool thing that I didn't mention. There is a crazy combo that makes up for everything. If you use the Primal Arcana from the Shadows, the passive effect of the Primal Arcana is that it says your weapon fires two more bullets each dealing 65 to 80 damage. So every shot you shoot, it just shoots twice more. Meaning that the more often you shoot, the more often you shoot these extra shots. So the higher fire rate that you have, the more that the Primal Arcana comes in handy. So maybe this makes up for it. Testing this on a 50 defense dummy again, at an 8 tile range on the 50 defense dummy with the Primal Arcana, the T14 staff deals 21.6k damage, while the Vigor actually does the same amount. And this is without the flames. To be honest, it's really hard to be in flame range and hit the primal arcana shots and hit the vigor shots because one, for the flames, you have to be in a five tile radius. Two, the vigor just has an annoying shot pattern, a bit more so than the tiered styles. And three, the primal arcana shots start outwards and then go inwards. If you are at the perfect five tile range, you can hit all three. And then it does another extra 5% damage. On the 50 defense target dummy, I ended up doing 22.5k this time. Now let's try the 15 defense target dummy again. With the tier 14 staff on the 15 defense target dummy, I did 25k damage. Now instead with the vigor, without the flame damage, I actually did a bit more, the slightest amount, 25.5k damage. So vigors are already better on 15 defense enemies without the flames, but when we add flames to the mix, it's doing 28.7k, so it does an additional 10% damage. So yeah, at least on Mystic, it's safe to say that vigor is the best staff if you have the Arcana Orb, but it's also worth noting that you can use the ability more often if you weren't using the Vigor style. So I wouldn't even say Vigor is that much better, but it's safe to say it's still best in slot. I wouldn't say it's as important to have as the Mischief, but for a Mystic at least, it feels better than the Mischief, so I'd put it just above the Mischief. Well there you have it guys, there's all of the items from the Moonlight Village and the Shrine on the tier list. What do you guys think? Am I dumb or is this accurate? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you're interested in me doing more of these tier list type of videos for items, I'd be really happy to. I find it super interesting. And yeah, subscribe, like the video if you haven't yet. It really helps with the algorithm and stuff. It's already hard enough making realm videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.